Hello everyone, uh, thank you for coming to our talk. Uh, it's about the fundamentals of UI and UX. So, hi everyone, I am, <laughs> I am the loud scream, other known of Bella. I am a visual designer, I do a lot of stuff like 3D design, 2D design, including icons, textures, and skyboxes. And I currently work full time at Cinder Studios. So this right here is some of my, uh, my current work that I've done for games such as Pet Simulator X, uh, Roblox High School 2, and more. <laughs> so my name is Unroot, or Tyler, and I'm a UI and UX designer for Moonbeam. Uh, I was a former 2020 accelerator, and I have over 50 million experience visits on the platform. Uh, here's some examples of my recent UI work as well from various games. Pretty proud of that. <laughs> uh, thank you. What the? Uh. So today we'll be speaking about five different things uh, on our agenda about UX and UI. So there are massive implications to not caring about your UX. There could be things like lower average playtime, lost revenue, poor ratings, or lackluster accessibility even. And these things can be what separates a good experience from a great experience. Um, and it's more, than, it's more applicable to more than just interfaces. It's applicable to anything that the user really interacts with or anything that they need to uh, interact with in the game. So before we actually jump into anything that's visual, we have to understand what actu UX actually is, since developers tend to overlook what UX is. So, so well, in simplest terms, UX is actually about understanding who your users are and the critical thinking behind your design choices, while UI design is actually applying these UX practices that fits your users' needs while, these while making your experiences enjoyable. Basically, Without one, then you won't really get the best product. So to break this down visually, UX is at the core of everything in game development. So you got business, you got design, and you got tech. So moving on, there's also the UX honeycomb, which most UX designers actually use when breaking up um, UI, basically. But <laughs> for, our, for our purposes, we'll be speaking about three instead of actually all of them. So. So with usability, your user flow should be straightforward and not have your users second guessing what, the, what everything does or else they'll actually leave your experience. Accessibility, so basically, do you have good color contrast across your UI? Can they actually, like, if, you're, if your game is actually an audio-based game, will they actually need like, text on the actual frames? And lastly, with desirability, do your users have a deep understanding or purpose with how they interact with anything? And basically how they, <laughs> how they click and every, with everything. So all three factors are something that should be considered when overall thinking, with, with overall designing your UI or revising how your UX is actually playable state. So the importance of <laughs> wireframes. Wireframes are probably your best friend in actually designing UI and a key thing that, we should, that should be considered. It helps communicate and also walks through to another developer if you're actually stuck um, it also saves you from designing and wasting time on UI that might actually work on your UX side. In this, you can actually predict the issues that arise and give you a rough mock-up for fully making your UI that you spent eight hours on. is way easier to do. So this is an example of an actual simple wireframe versus an actual detailed style sheet. As you can see, there's actually fonts and everything like that that walk through an actual, to an actual designer or an actual, another developer in your studio, and it's way easier to use. So uh, now we reach some of the common mistakes after designing your interface. Um, <laughs> overwhelming your users. Uh, overwhelming your users is something that's very easy to do by accident, um, whether it be uh, loading too much information in the HUD, or making your close button too big, or um, even just making players feel like they're in a visual labyrinth as they're using the, your interface. Um, the layout should be navigable, essentially. Uh, here are some examples of overwhelming users. On the left here is an example from my good friend Epic Drew, who made this for us. Uh, you can see that as you're going through the um, layout, you can see there's a lot of text and a lot of buttons, really. Um, and it's just 
you're spending way too much time looking at this, trying to figure out what it is. Um, and on the right here, we have a little bit more elegantly presented UI from Roblox High School 2. And you can see that as um, they're clicking through it, there is uh, different buttons that they have to click through, which kind of adds more complexity to the interface as they're trying to figure out what they want to do. Uh, so another problem is inconsistency. Um, this is probably the easiest mistake to make by accident. Um, and it can just be like very simple things like using different fonts or font weights that don't fit, um, frames or buttons or images that don't really fit the theme, or using too many colors that don't really match your color palette. Um, and here's some more examples uh, kind of showcasing this inconsistency. On the left here, we have a banger example from one of the Roblox employees, Adam, uh, Dragon Riders. He gave us permission, of course, to use uh, this, in his, uh, this interface in our presentation. But you can just see as you're looking at it, um, there's some things that like, don't really line up. Like you're trying to identify one specific theme throughout it all. It's kind of just differently styled. Um, on the right here, we have some really nice UI by I believe someone who's in the audience made this. Uh, from eviction notice, and this is also very elegantly presented. Uh, there are just some inconsistencies with like the padding um, around the edges and the types of font weights that they use in certain areas, but still, really clean. So with layout, things that stick out are normally inconsistencies with padding, otherwise known as spacing between different frames and elements. Another critical mistake is alignment, which normally gets overlooked when actually, which actually helps improve readability uh, and makes your elements feel more related and connected together. Lastly, another huge factor is visual hierarchy, so how things are actually ordered in the layout and how users actually see certain things. The key thing about removing friction and over, over, overall enhancing how users interact and view what your UI is. So again, we have another good example from Dragon Riders. Um, as you can see, all the actual elements, so the done button is actually way bigger than it should be versus the actual other elements that are the inventory. And another example is Super Striker League. So as you can see, all the stuff is all over the place in the actual corner for the main HUD of it. So yeah. Visuals is another <laughs> common mistake with actual how developers overuse or actually underuse them. So sometimes developers actually use icons that don't actually make sense. Or because people usually, icons should be usually understood in something that that it's familiar rather than having them second guess what it is, basically. Another thing is designing that makes, basically making your UI look way too pretty. Um, sometimes it's an overkill and commonly seen in like mobile games, but yeah. So this is an example from pre-Outlaster. As you can see, the confirm button is actually blending into the actual <laughs> frame itself and the icons are actually blending in as well to the green. And then we got a nice example from Sword Legends. So as you can see, there's a lot going on with the colors and the whole visual hierarchy of everything. So, so micro animations. Um, animations can be a very subtle yet effective way of giving your interfaces more life. Um, you have to be careful, though, because your animations can either be too fast to be noticed or too slow that people have enough time to leave your experience before the animation can actually finish. Um, it's a double-edged sword, but when it's done correctly, it can really add a satisfying layer of polish. So striving to make everything feel as natural as possible can help prevent making like dull animations, basically. Um, so let's apply some of these UX concepts to some interfaces. But first, before we do that, uh, we're going to want to understand our user. So how are you supposed to build a house or a car or really anything if you don't have blueprints or a plan for it. You could just wing it, but chances are, later down the line, you're going to run into some problems. So it's a good idea to really have a fundamental understanding of your user and who you're making the product for. Um, so like asking yourself probing questions can be a super effective way of doing this. Um, behind me are some examples of doing that. Um, but when you ask yourself these questions throughout the design process and the development process, it kind of brings those problems out before they like make it into your end product, which can have bigger problems. Um, but with that said, let's improve an interface together. So let's see the beauty that we're working with here. We got this open shop button on the left side, and then we click it, and Oh, <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, so it's pretty uh, basic, and then you close it away and did, yeah. So that's, that's what we're working with. Um, so uh, did this go back? OK, yeah, yeah, sorry. 
Can we go back, actually, one? The back button's broken. Okay, so asking yourself probing questions, like I said, um, these are some more examples of probing questions that you can ask yourself. Um, just really forcing yourself to reconsider the integrity of your design, and that will like really help with the end result, um, like I said. Some other visual common mistakes that people make are things like color, padding, um, layout and flow, so like Bella said with the wireframing, that can really help prevent that. Um, information overload, like we had talked about with overwhelming users, and lifeless elements with animations, etc. So um, let's actually apply these concepts to that interface from before. Um, so are you ready for all of you guys, for me to blow your mind with one small UI trick? Probably not, but I'm going to do it anyways. So we have this, and we transform it to that. <laughs> not that big of a change, but there is one subtle thing that's different. There is padding, 15 pixels to be more exact, around all of the edges of each like, different element. And this is just a starting point. It might not look like much, but the end goal is to obviously take it from zero to hero. So the next thing that we want to do when asking ourselves these probing questions is, what is our co color palette? Um, right now, it looks something a little bit like this, if I'm being completely honest. But really, it's like all over the place. Um, but despite that, we can fix it. And this is the new color palette that we're going to go with. We just kind of picked some gradients and some colors in Photoshop and Illustrator. Um, well, Bella did. And I think it looks really nice. <laughs> so applying that, um, we can apply that to boost readability. And in this, we just changed the background color and the little text label color in the top left. Um, and we'll keep adding more to this as we change certain elements. But for now, let's work on the consistency. So to do that, we should ask ourselves, what's inconsistent? Um, I'm about to make another one of those tiny but massive changes that'll blow your mind. Uh, so here, we actually changed the corner radius of all of the UI corners and these frames to be six pixels. And you can see that it looks a bit more like rounded off, pun intended, uh, on each of the elements. Um, yeah. So next question is, how can we simplify this? And this question may seem daunting to some people, depending on the interface that you're working with. But it really just depends on your requirements and what you have. So for this, um, a good place to start would be redesigning some of the overwhelming elements that were at the top of the interface. Um, and if you look at the list of things that we changed, we actually simplified the interface by, um, re or by, increasing, the or <laughs> by increasing the consistency throughout the elements. Um, and we will continue to simplify elements in this way. So for this, um, we also simplified the bottom elements where those game passes were, just again, applying our color palette, um, adding icons and a little pattern in the background, just kind of brightening it up, adding an extra layer of polish on top. Um, and we also repurposed some of the buttons to make them fit more with what we wanted to make. Um, so here, as you can see, just by asking ourselves probing questions and enforcing consistency throughout the interface, um, we could take our macaroni plate UI and transform it into something usable. And there's still tons of different things that can be done to this UI to make it like way better. Um, and if you do, feel free to send it to our Twitter at the Loud Screams and Unroot. So thank you.